Hey everyone, in this video, we'll modify our parkour controller so that it will perform different actions based on the height of the obstacle. So if I go in front of this obstacle and press space, it will perform the jump up action like this. All right. But for a smaller obstacle like this, it will perform the step up action. All right. So we'll be architecting our parkour actions using scriptable objects to make it designer friendly. So any designers will be able to add or edit parkour actions without touching the code. So let's look at how to implement this. By the way, we have an advanced parkour and climbing system asset on Unity's asset store. It's an out of the box system with which you can set up parkour and climbing mechanics in your game in just few minutes. It comes with lots of advanced features like predictive jumps, procedural climbing, balancing on narrow obstacles, swinging on bars, etc. So be sure to check it out if you want a complete system to integrate in your games without building it from scratch. I'll leave a link to it in the description. The asset also comes with the entire source code. So if you want, you can also review the code and learn how each feature is implemented. All right, so with that, let's start the video. So first, I'll create the script for the Paco action. So in scripts, inside the Paco system folder, I'll create a new script called Paco action. Okay, let me get rid of the default code. And this script is going to be a scriptable object instead of a mono behavior. So instead of inheriting from mono behavior, I'll inherit from scriptable object. Okay. So scriptable object is a data container. In this case, we'll use scriptable objects to store the data of our Paco actions. So if we architect our Paco action like this, then the game designers will easily be able to add and update Paco actions without touching the code. So inside the Paco action scriptable object, we should define a variable for all the data fields that we want to store. So here, first we need to store the animation that will be played for this action. So I'll create a string variable called anim name. Okay. And next, I'll define two float variables called min height and max height. All right, so we should really be able to perform the Sparkle action if the height of the obstacle is between this min height and max height. Okay, so these are all the data fields that we want for now. So next, we should be able to create instance of the Sparkle action from Unity. So for that, we can add an attribute on top of this class. So the attribute is called create asset menu. And here we can specify a menu name. So this will be the menu that you see in Unity. So I'll just give something like Paco system slash new Paco action. Okay. So now if we go to Unity and if we right click and select create, we have a new menu here called Paco system and inside it, we have an option to create a new Paco action. All right. So if I click on that, it will create an instance of the scriptable object. And here you can see all the fields that we defined in our Paco action scriptable object. Okay. So we can easily create our Paco actions like this. But I don't want to put my Paco actions along with the scripts. I'll put this in my game folder instead because this is something that game designers might want to access. So here I'll create a new folder called Paco Actions. All right. And in here, I'll create a new Paco action. So the first one will be called Step Up. So here for the animation name, I'll give Step Up. Okay, so this was the animation state name 
that we gave in the previous video while adding this animation. So next for the min height, I'll give 0.3 and for the max height, I'll give something like 0.8. Okay, so we should only be able to use the step up action on small obstacles like these two. So the height of this one is 0.75. So we'll be able to perform step up on it because its height is between the min height and max height of this action. All right. And by the way, the reason why I gave 0.3 for the min height is because 0.3 is a step offset of our character controller. So that means if the height of an obstacle is 0.3 or below, then the character controller will treat it as a step and it'll automatically go on top of it. Okay, so if it's below 0.3, it'll be considered as a step by the character controller. And if it's above 0.3, then we'll do the step up action. Okay, so next we'll create another action called jump up. All right, so this will be the action used for higher obstacles like these ones. Okay. So here for the name of the animation, I'll give jump up. So we haven't added this animation to the animator yet. We'll do that soon. So I'll give it the name jump up and for the min height, I'll give 0.8 and for the max height, I'll give 1.5. Okay. So if the obstacle height is above 0.8 and below 1.5, then we'll use the jump up action. Okay. So now let's import the jump up animation and add it to the animator. So I'll drag and drop the jump up animation to the animations folder. Again, I downloaded this from Mixamo and I'll attach it to the lecture of this video. All right. So let's make this animation humanoid. We also have to set the avatar. So let me choose Erika avatar. Okay. So now if we go to the animation tab and if we drag and drop our player over here, as you can see that the animation is playing. Okay. So in the configuration of this animation, we can turn on bake into pose for root transform rotation because in this animation, the player is not rotating at all. And we also have green light over here for loop match. But we don't want to bake the position Y and position exit. All right. So next, when you play the animation, as you can see that this is not just a jump animation. The player takes two steps before he actually starts jumping. All right, so we don't want the portion where he's taking the step. We only want the jumping portion. So we can start this animation from somewhere around here, from frame eight. So for the start, we can give eight. And then at the end of the animation, you can see that the character just stands in an idle position for some time. So we also don't want that. We can cut the animation as soon as jumping is over. So I'll set the end frame somewhere around 47. Okay. So now we only have the jumping part in the animation clip. All right. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And let's drag and drop it to our animator. So I'll name this as jump up so this name is really important because it should be the same name as the one that we give in the action okay so it should be jump up like this so next I'll also add a transition from the jump up to locomotion so that once jump up animation is over the character will go back to the locomotion state okay so now we have the jump up and setup action created 
and ready to use. So let's go ahead and use them from our parkour controller. So from here, instead of hard coding the step up action like this, we should select the action based on the height of the obstacle, right? So first what I'll do is, I'll define a list of parkour actions in the parkour controller. All right, so this will be the list of parkour actions that we can use. And next, if there's an obstacle in front of us, we should loop through all our parkour actions and should check if we can perform it. Okay, so here I'll write a for each loop to loop through all the parkour actions. All right, so for each action, we should check if we can perform it based on the height of the obstacle. So I want to put that logic to check if an action is possible inside the Paco action script itself. So here I'll create a public function called check if possible. Okay, and this function will take the obstacle hit data as the first parameter. So this will allow us to calculate the height of the obstacle all right and it will also take a reference to the player's transform okay so in this function we can get the height of the obstacle by subtracting the y position of the height hit point in the hit data by the y position of the player so inside the hit data we have the height hit object okay so we can get the position of the height hit from height hit dot point and here we are only interested in the y coordinate of that point so if we subtract this by the player's y position then we'll get the height of the obstacle so let me just store this in a variable called height okay so now, if the height is between the min height and max height, then this action will be possible. Otherwise, it will not be possible. Okay. So I'll check for the condition where the action won't be possible. So if the height is less than the min height, or if the height is greater than the max height, then that means the height is not between the min height and max height. So from here, we can just return false. Okay. And otherwise, we can just return true. All right. So now we can call this function to check if this action can be performed. So from the Paco controller, for each action, we should check if that action is possible. So I'll call check if possible function. And we have to pass the hit data and the player's transform to this function. Okay. So if an action is possible, then we can go ahead and call the do parkour action function. So let me just move this line inside our if condition. Okay. So to this function, we also want to pass the action to perform. We don't want to just hard code the step up action. So here, I'll take the Paco action to perform as a parameter. All right. And when calling the do Paco action function, we'll pass the action to perform. Okay. So finally, if we find an action to perform, then we don't have to loop through the rest of the actions. So we can just break this loop by using the break keyword. Okay. So next, for the animation, we should use the animation of the Paco action instead of hard coding step up. So right now, the animation name is a private variable. So let's actually create a property to expose it. All right, so now 
for the animation we can pass action dot anim name okay and by the way since this animation name is a string that can be entered by designers there's a chance that we might give wrong animation name over here or we might make any typo in the animation name so we can check if the animation name was correct by comparing it with the name of the anim state that we get so here i'll compare the name of the anim state with our animation name so we have a function called is name for that so let me pass action dot animation name over here okay and if the name of the animation is different then we can just write a debug dot log error statement over here saying that the parkour animation is wrong all right so this will give us an error if we make any mistake in the animation name so this is all we have to do in the parkour controller so let's go to unity and assign the parkour actions in the parkour controller okay so here we have two actions the first one is step up and the second one is jump up all right so now our parkour controller should select one of these actions to perform based on the height of the obstacle so let's go ahead and test this okay so if i go in front of this obstacle and press space it'll use jump up action okay but for this obstacle it'll use a step up action all right so our parkour controller is selecting different actions based on the height of the obstacle okay so for this one also we'll be using the jump up action but it's a bit messy right now because we are not using target matching we'll be doing that in a future video okay and by the way right now we don't have any actions that can be performed for the last two obstacles so we need a climb up action for climbing on higher obstacles like this but the problem is i wasn't able to find a single animation in mixamo for climb up so i achieved it by combining two animations together so since that's a bit more tricky we'll be implementing that in a future video once we're done with the basics okay but for now we have our jump up and step up actions okay so i'll stop the video here and i'll see you in the next video